Adonai Studios presents. Apart from God, one person that would trust is Daniel. Whoa. Yeah, one human being that would trust is Daniel. I knew she's the right person to support with my vision. She is higher educated than me. So we balance it. The one thing <laughs> I love so much about him, he's very clean, he cooks, he does almost everything. For me, I don't see him as a person with disability. A special spouse, disability and marriage. Naturally, once an adult is gainfully employed or has an occupation and is self-sufficient, the next phase of life is marriage. Almost everyone would love to settle down and make a family of their own. For the regular person in society, it's just a matter of when to make that final decision. However, the same cannot be said for persons with disabilities in Ghana. Deep-seated misconceptions about disability make it difficult for non-disabled persons to allow themselves to fall in love with persons with disabilities no matter how much they may admire them. Some would turn down proposals by persons with disabilities or resist the urge to propose to them for fear of being mocked. In cases where some allow the power of love to override their inhibitions and get involved with persons with disabilities, families and friends become stumbling blocks. At first, I introduced him as a friend to my family and then they were okay with him being my friend. But when I decided to marry him, that was where the problem started. Mrs. Catherine Amaki Ashley, an accountant and a spouse of a man with albinism speaking. They did not want me to marry him because they didn't want grandchildren with albinism in our family. They were like, oh, why do you want to marry an albino? We don't want an albino in our family. Your children will be an albino and other things. It took a long time before we got married. The time that we planned to get married, we didn't get married another time. Because I still have to convince my family that he's the best person for me. I can't remember my friend told me in school, is that your boyfriend? No, how can you go out with such a person? People mocked me, people even told me, hey Kate, upon all your tuna, upon everything, look at the person you're going to marry. Or somebody will ask, is that your husband? Hey, how, how come you ended up with this person? Now I said, why? Is he not a human being? Beyond albinism, he's a human being and he's very intelligent. So I don't see anything wrong with him. At first, when we were not dating, they were friends but when she found out that we were dating she wasn't happy madam mabel amakwe the spouse of a man with physical disability is speaking but i told her that that's what i want this problem of marriage is one of the major challenges for persons with disabilities in ghana the situation presents them with two options which are to either decide to forget about marriage entirely or to marry their kind, thus fellow persons with disabilities. Even though it is not wrong for persons with disabilities to marry themselves, the situation makes life extra difficult for them as against the invaluable helpmates non-disabled persons become to their disabled spouses as they become their lifelong aids making up for their weaknesses and in genetic conditions such as albinism, where both partners with the albinism gene will most likely produce children with the condition, it results in more vulnerable members of the society who require the amenities and all the other things persons with disabilities need to make life easy for them. In exploring this subject of disability and marriage, we share with you the stories of three young women and a young pastor, all regular people who are married to persons with disabilities. I think we were friends for a year and then he proposed. We did it for eight years. So we got married for nine years. I met him. We all stay in the same area, just opposite where I live. That's how I met him. I met him from there. So that, so it means that you, you guys were friends for a long time? Yeah, time. yeah. Yes, from process. Uh, I was working at a club by then, and then I pick up my phone to talk to someone, and mistakenly I dial a wrong number by then. So 
it landed on her phone. But then she was in school. She told me uh, it's a wrong line, but I, I was uh, pushed by her voice to know her further. But to my surprise, uh, she confidently told me she is blind. Blind? <laughs> I, that, that, that pushed me to, I mean, draw closer because uh, it's not everyone that, let's say, it, it, she didn't know me. We are not seeing each other, but she is confident. So the first thing that pushed me to do that was her confidence. Pastor Jeffrey Kojo Dake, the spouse of a woman with visual impairment speaking. And then I lost her contact for about two years. So from uh, her or senior high school, we didn't meet. And then I found it back. And then by then she's now in Legon. So we agreed to meet each other for the first time. When I got to the uh, school, she told me her, the dress she'll be wearing and then where she'll be standing. So when I saw her, we, we were so excited. She ran and then, uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say run, but yeah, we managed to hug ourselves. That's when it started. From Legon, and we didn't marry at that time when, when she finished. She further education. She got a scholarship at Kenya. So I wait for another two years for, for her to come back. We also share with you an interesting coincidence of two sisters, both married to men with albinism. Sandra Amakuo found herself falling in love with Mr. Joseph Yamo a young man with albinism, years after her elder sister, Catherine Amaki, married a man with the same condition. I'm even surprised <laughs> because I, I don't know. I would say it's a coincidence because, in fact, I never thought of it. It never crossed my mind. I never dated anyone with albinism, like, and then all of a sudden it happened. So. So, but were you dating him before his got married? No, 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 no. It was when my sister got married, even years after my sister married. Okay. So, we, I would say, I'd known him. Yeah. And then, but we're just, it was, I wouldn't even say it was friendship or anything. Actually, we we're mates at school, but then weren't close. Maybe he sees me and then hi, and then that would be that. Until 2020 October, yeah, we met in October. By January, we were married. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was. I don't even know how me myself at times I think about it and then, but then I wouldn't say that it's because maybe my sister married someone like that. That's why. Mrs. Sandra Amaku Oyemo, an accountant and a spouse of a man with albinism, speaking. Yeah, because it wasn't in my plans at all. Even when he approached me, I was a bit, I wasn't that comfortable because I thought maybe people would say that because my sister married someone like that. That's why I'm also into it. So you're talking about how difficult it was for her to convince your parents to accept the Yeah. In your case? It wasn't. So probably I will say it's because she had already gone through that. Yeah, so when I went home to introduce him, no one said anything. And nobody asked you? <laughs> Nothing, but it's just that you see people make comments or necessary comments and other things. Uh -huh. The family members were a bit concerned about it because they say because maybe your sister has gone into that thing. But what really is the experience of marrying a person with disability? Is there any difference at all between marrying them and marrying persons without a disability? Very lovely, caring, and then he's down to earth. Apart from God, one person that will trust is Daniel. Whoa. Yeah, one human being that will trust is Daniel. I would say he's a wonderful man. Very caring. That's what I would say. He's a very wonderful And then he's respectful. He respects a lot. He respects my decisions. Yeah. If there is anything, he doesn't just make decisions by himself. Yeah, I think if I'm supposed to be in it, he tells me. In. So I'll just say he's a wonderful person. What got me to be interested in him was how he takes care of himself. Because when he gets to his house from work, the one thing 
<laughs> I love so much about him. When he gets back from work, as soon as he comes, he has to enter into the washroom, take his bath. That's what. He's very clean. He cooks. He does almost everything. I don't. I don't do anything extra because if I'm doing something extra, I want to do it because he he can do it. What I think extra that I do, maybe if something is up and he can't pick from the top, I can pick the thing from up for him. But apart from that, he can do whatever I do. For me, I don't see him as a person with disability. I knew she's the right person to support in my vision because I also like to write books. She is higher educated than me. And then uh, maybe there are some ways she can use it properly than I do. So we balance it. As would be noticed in Mrs. Catherine Ashley's story, one of the reasons why many do not want to marry or allow their relatives to marry persons with disabilities is the erroneous perception that they would automatically produce children with disabilities. But the stories of these couples disprove that impression as none of them produce a disabled child. And in another interesting case, Mr. and Mrs. Ashley have triplet, all regular children. There is now enough reason why one must not fear falling in love with a person with a disability and also why people must not discourage friends or family members from marrying disabled people. Was the person is a human, the person has a character that you may think maybe this character would be okay with me. So look at the person's character, look at how the person is and then just see beyond the color. They are just, just like any other person. And even my father, after I got married, my father told me that ah, Katie made the best decision and that this guy is a, is a good person. Marrying to her is not a challenge to me. Yeah, because she can do anything she wanted to do. So if you want to marry like, or visually impaired, you must first look at what you want to do. Your vision must be aligned with what she wants to do so that there will be support from each side. You must ignore what others are saying. You have to draw closer to know them better. And then from there, you can make your own judgment. Don't allow what society uh, is saying to, to make you stay away from them. They are lovely people if you get to know them. I would like to tell ladies out there that ma marrying a person with disability is not a bad thing. If you find him, and you love him you can go ahead with him the way he is just flow with him and everything will be fine i don't like eating on the floor but my husband loves eating on the floor so i i have adopted that thing of eating on the floor with him so now i don't even like eating on table i would prefer eating on the floor with my husband so I think that's something that he does that I, I, I wasn't doing. But now we do it together. I love sitting on the floor and eating together. So, and understanding. If that's what they want, they should just go in for it. And at the end of the day, it's to their benefit. You see, you don't allow someone to discourage you. At times you do make bad choices and then people tend to maybe advise us on that but if you see that this is what you want and this is a right thing your intuition everything about you is telling you that then just go in for it because i'll say that they are humans right to me i don't even see it as a disability they do everything as just to are and they, they didn't create themselves they were created by god so if you happen to see someone like that and you like the person why not yes just go in for it Persons with disabilities are also expected to conduct themselves with dignity and honor so people would find them attractive enough to marry. They need to keep themselves well. When I, when I first met uh, my wife, even though she can't see well, but the way she managed to walk gorgeously, it's, I love it. Yes, that is one of, us, one of the things that also... She didn't walk like someone who is blind or visually impaired. So she walked gorgeously like uh, any other person. 
There are so many persons with disability out there. I see some on the streets. You see some, they, they don't take care of themselves. Taking care of yourself, I think is part of you. You should, you should add that one to yourself. It's not because you are a person with disability. You have to just leave yourself anyhow. You have to take care of yourself. Because if you want someone to admire you, it's how you take care of yourself. Now, here is the conclusion of the whole matter. There is absolutely nothing wrong with marrying a person with disabilities. So if you find yourself falling in love with a person with a disability, please go ahead and make that move. Written, produced, and edited by Benjamin Nilati Aiku. Narrated by Francis Jackson Ahiable. Camera work by Sef Timothy Lumo Elolo and Zak Wumpini Na. Sign language interpretation by Dennis Asamoah.